All right, guys, today we're scanning a Cybertruck with the free scan combo from Shining 3D, available today at visionminer.com slash scanners. We've got a whole range of them, and we're here to help you figure out for your business and your specific application which one is the right one. So today's just a demo. We're going to show you what it's like to scan a Cybertruck. I'm pretty stoked. I bet you're stoked. Let's go ahead and bring the Cybertruck in. Yeah, that was clickbait. This is a real application for a real thing that we have going on with a client involving a real Cybertruck as well as this scale model. They're designing some stuff for this, which I can't really talk about, that requires the shape and the size and everything for a model, for a scale model. Now maybe you're doing architecture and you want to 3D print it on something like our 22IDX or our Sinterit actually, this, the SLS 3D printers that we carry, those are amazing for architecture, but you're making a scale model, that's the idea. So we're just gonna scan this thing in record time with the free scan combo in laser mode and get all the detail, get the whole shape so that then they can send that to their designer and the designer can make their stuff around it however they want. I am going to first fixture this to my scanning surface, which already has the markers applied to it. I'm gonna make sure it's fixed to the table. I'm just gonna use a little bit of sticky tack. This stuff comes in really handy for 3D scanning because it's just mildly tacky, doesn't leave residue and keeps your stuff fixed to the area that has the markers on it. So we got that pretty good. It's not gonna move. Yeah, I'll put a third one in there just for just for extra peace of mind. All right, so I've got the software open. I'm just gonna select laser scan mode and we're just gonna do this. We're just gonna go basic. Let's go Cybertruck 01 and let's do half a millimeter resolution. That should be plenty for what they're trying to do. I'm gonna do the one laser line because it looks really cool and it's gonna, get, it's gonna get it really good. So I'm gonna go auto exposure, one line. I'm just gonna pick up the scanner Throw on that handy dandy little wrist strap and hit the button on the back. Let it do its auto exposure thing. And that's just gonna get the lighting in the room and the environment and set it to the proper exposure for the cameras to get the best data. And then I'm going to start. So here we go. Ah, that is sweet. I like the single laser line just because it's like, scanning's fun, but it makes it even more fun. Now remember, I gotta have three markers at any given time in view. So I'm on this Lazy Susan and that little area just has one marker. Here, I'm gonna show you the 36, 26 lines. Whoa, it's like a freaking Gatling gun all of a sudden. Here we go, and I'm just gonna hold it. And I can basically just move this Lazy Susan around, keep gathering data. It's getting so much data, we're already at uh, about a million points now. And it's getting the reflective surface, I mean the glass, plastic but you know reflective it's transparent it's picking that up like nothing and then uh, if I want I can sort of try to get in those windows now they're really small windows so based on the triangulation of these two different lenses it can only triangulate what it can see with both lenses all right so I'm going to go in here I'm going to select some of this area and I'm going to create a cutting plane just to get rid of all this data I'll move that edge up a little bit okay that should be good. I'm going to hit apply. And now I'm going to go in and select some of the actual Cybertruck because I only really want data that's connected to the Cybertruck along with the wheels. I'm going to make sure you get part of the wheels on there because I don't think they're actually connected in the scan. All right, got those. And then I'm going to do connected domain and that's going to select just all that. Oh, let's actually get inside there. There's the sticky tack that I used, right? So that's kind of cool that it's not getting that. I'm gonna deselect. I'm just gonna delete some of the major data because it wasn't getting the seats in there and I don't really want it to delete that data. I'm gonna go here. I'll just delete the big stuff. The rest of it's gonna get taken care of. All those little artifacts and things will get taken care of during the processing of the point cloud, which we're gonna do here right in a second. I'll just delete most of that because we can handle that optimize and generate the point clouds. And then we're gonna look at what we actually got before I move the model because it, there might've been some areas in there that I need more data, but we're just gonna flip it over and do the other side and then align those and have a complete model for the designers then model based off. There we are. Oh, that looks great. That looks impressive. I'm actually, it's always cool when you switch modes and then 
you go into it and you see the final result. So good enough for what we're doing today. We're really looking for the tolerancing around these areas, but I do want to get a little more into that area right there. So we're going to add to this and I'm going to use the single line mode. This is for getting down holes or in small crevices, and this should be perfect for that. All right, so here we go. I'm also going to zoom in using the little buttons on the top so that I can see the data that's missing or that I want to get. Let's just get as much of that data as we can. We've got our scan here, pretty good data, looking solid. All right, that's all we need to do for that. I'm gonna go into project group and I'm going to hit new project. This is gonna create a second scan in the same overall project. And then I'm just gonna go back to scan setting. I'm gonna start on 26 lines for efficiency. Turn on auto exposure, flip her over and start scanning. All right, here we go. Boom, like the whole thing scanned in two seconds. Look at that. I can move it around, keep doing stuff. Now, if I want, say I'm scanning more detail, etc., I can always go in here and create a quick cutting plane by selecting some of that. Create the plane, move it up a tiny bit because we already got the whole top of the car. Hit apply, and now it's not gonna scan the whole table, it's just gonna scan the car. And I just pick my scanner back up and I can pretty much do all of this in like one or two passes. If I really want to get in there by the tires and everything, I can use the single laser line mode to really get more detail. It looks like it's getting that black trim on the bottom very well. Because most of this is a matte black, but those edges are a shiny reflective black. So they are more difficult in general. I can do different angles. I can also, you know, as I'm moving, I'm sort of changing my angles and getting everything. So the reflections are different and the lighting is different and just seeing everything from the triangulated different area. And you can see we're getting 90 to 120 or so frames per second. And on this scan, I'm at 254,000 points, mainly because it's only scanning the object. We were probably at one or two million previously when it was on the actual table. And I gotta be aware of the triangulation angle. That's the whole key. Making sure both lenses can see the area that the laser is hitting. So if I align my two lenses with the slot angle, it's my best chance of getting down into that area. See if I can get down that tiny little hole there. This is pretty cool. That's something you cannot do with any other scanner or most other scanners. You cannot get into those tiny little crevices like this hole right there and that little, that little notch right in there even down into these wheel well areas, that's pretty impressive. You'd have a hard time doing that on something like the HX. All right, so now I can probably see what connected domain does. I'm gonna select part of the model and see if it gets everything that I want. Yeah, pretty good. All right, so now I'm just gonna invert, delete all the extra data, hit apply, and then go to optimize and generate point cloud. All right, and here we go. So it looks like we've got a little bit of extra data here. I don't know what's causing that. So I'm just gonna come in here and delete that since I don't want it. We go right here to the align panel, hit project one in the fixed window, project two in the floated window, and automatic feature alignment should work great here. So I'm just gonna hit the button and bada bing, bada boom. We got a complete scan of the Cybertruck. Now the wheels are probably not gonna match up yeah, as you can see, because they weren't in the same position when I scanned them, my bad. We're gonna go next, that's gonna lock in the alignment, exit, and now we've got our scan. I can look at both of them, I can delete the markers just to get a clearer view, and select both to make it all blue. Okay, so we got some good detail. This was scanned at half a millimeter resolution. You can go all the way down to 0.05 millimeters. We've got a whole video on that, show you how much crazy detail this can get. But for now, we're just gonna go mesh the model and uh, we'll do a low filter, no hole filling or anything. We don't gotta do that and hit apply. Now the filter is kind of going to smooth things out and makes things a little bit nicer as opposed to raw data. If we were going to reverse engineer this or some other part, usually I would just do no filter, but this generally tends to make it a little bit smoother and it makes the STL just a little bit better. So as you can see there, I'll show you. If we go no filter and hit apply, you just pause the screen and then come back and look at that. As you can see, the edges, it's a lot more tessellated. There's a lot 
you see a little bit of the surface detail and everything like that versus going a high filter is going to do even more smoothing and give us a much more i mean you could call it refined you could also call it not exact it depends what you're doing it depends on your intention with the scan and the end result of the data you want as you can see there's much less detail on well just overall but on the wheels especially i like it with the low filter we're gonna hit apply and then we're gonna confirm. And now I can go simplification. So if I wanted to 3D print this, just go straight to 3D printing, then we could do it watertight and I could take this down to like two megs or four megs or something to make a low poly version. I can optimize the mesh, which will retessellate everything. You can smooth it, remove holes, fill holes, stuff like that. You can also go over here to the measurement tab and I can select measurements from point to point and get the distances, or I can even go in and create a feature so that it's easier once I import it. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go three points fit. I'm just gonna go click, 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 and create. Now we've got a plane under there, so that helps align the whole model of the world plane, and you've got features and everything there. So I'll close that, but in the post-processing, if I wanna reverse engineer or do something with this, I can click here and go straight into Geomagic Essentials, or any other program that I want. You wanna do Control X, Berry Surf, Solid Edge, etc. That is the basis of it. That's what it's like to scan a 124th scale cyber truck <laughs> for whatever projects you might be doing. If you've got a real cyber truck already, hit us up. We'll scan it in real life. Otherwise, we got a couple on order that will be here in the next 20 years, hopefully. And uh, we'll get that on camera too. But let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Let me know what you wanna see in the next one. And if you are interested in one of these scanners, give us a call or shoot us an email and we will scan something for you live on video to make sure that whichever scanner you're considering actually works for what you're trying to do. That's what we do here. We consult and then sell. That's what we do here. We help businesses get the right piece of equipment for what they're doing. And we've got a whole line of 3D scanners and high temperature 3D printers printing crazy materials like Peak, Ultim, PPSU, etc. Hit that like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. I'll see you on the next video.